Thank you. Yeah, let's talk about low bit rate video streaming for web video conferencing. Um, before that, a little bit about myself. I work for Collabra. Um, Collabra is an open source consultancy. I am the machine learning lead there, and we work on the whole stack of machine learning from basically the machine learning architecture um, up to training, um, data generation, and optimization for um, different hardwares. So web video streaming is basically represents the majority of the global internet traffic today. Um, estimations go up as far as 80%. And um, since COVID-19, internet service providers have seen a surge in internet traffic, especially web video conferencing providers such as Zoom, for example, have seen a 10 time increase in usage. And web video calls can consume between one kilobits per second up to um, a few megabits per second in bandwidth. Unfortunately, a vast majority of the world population doesn't have access to high bandwidth internet connections or have like connectivity issues. And for that reason, we thought wouldn't it be great if we could reduce the latency or like the, the, the bandwidth um, for web video calls. And if I talk about like reducing that, we are actually talking about 10 times, 100 times. And we are talking about, in this case, um, a bandwidth between like 100 bits per second up to 1,000 bits per second. And that would actually also reduce the overall internet traffic just by reducing these huge amounts that we usually use for video streaming. Um, just to give an example, I think like we have seen this um, all at some point or the other. Um, we are in a video call, we start our call, and all of a sudden the, the, the video freezes. And we tell this person on the other side, hey, please, can you like turn off your camera? And that person turns off the camera and then like the audio gets clean again. We can hear them, but we lose a lot of like this quality of like a normal video call because we can't see them anymore. And at Collabra, we thought like, how can we fix this? And we actually use state of the art deep learning, a deep neural network, a decoder network to compress video, especially targeted at web video conferencing. And this is basically an example of how it looks like. Um, we can see here like a comparison between H264, our video compression, and our video compression with uh, super resolution on top of it to increase the overall quality of the image itself. So how did we do this? Before I show you our approach, just let's take a look at the just conventional approach. And the setup here is we have a sender, we have a receiver. On the sender side, we have our microphone, we have our webcam, and we basically encode the video stream, our webcam stream, using HT64 or AV1, and our audio stream usually using ACC and just stream it to the other side, then decode the video stream, the audio stream, sync it up, and show it to the, the end user. Now, in comparison, our approach is, in some sense, a little bit similar. Um, the setup is similar. So on the sender side, we still have the webcam. We don't really need it, but we have like a microphone. And on the receiver side, we obviously want to see the person speaking. So at the beginning of the call, of a web video conferencing call, we usually take an image just one thing image, as mentioned here on the slide, it's one time. And, but after this, we don't transfer the video stream to the receiver. Um, so we take this one image, and then we only transmit the audio to the receiver side. And on the receiver side, we have a deep neural network, our decoder network, that takes the audio, the single image, and basically reconstructs the image or like the video. And we trained this model on 10,000 hours of uh, web video conferencing uh, videos to basically 
learn motions, head movements, um, eye movements, a little bit of arms we can see here and there as well. Um, but what we have noticed is the most important parts are mouth movements, so like lips. And I brought you a couple of examples of how this pipeline looks like uh, when we apply this to the setup that I presented before. So on the left side, we see this single input frame that we took at the beginning of the video call. And then if we basically take the audio, put it into our deep learning network, we can can reconstruct the image that we see in the middle. And we see it's like a little bit blurry, so we also decided to bump up the quality using super resolution. Um, that's what we can see on the right side. And obviously, this comes with a couple of um, artifacts limitations um, that I will talk about like a little bit later. Um, just to show you like another example, um, this one has quite a few artifacts. Um, as we could see like in the input frame, Again, we took this at the beginning of the tall. Um, you see, like, we, we have, don't have like an idea of what the, the teeth look like. So as you could see in the like, reconstruction, the teeth are like, a little bit weird. Um, just comes from the fact that we don't have an idea how the teeth look like. So the network has to make things up here and there. And also, like, in the eyes, they look a little bit shiny, glary, but overall, I think we can all agree that the reconstruction of the video is really good. And just to emph emphasize this one more time, um, we just use the audio and the single image itself. Um, one last sample from a female this time. Again, we use like one input image and use the audio stream to uh, reconstruct the face. And we have like the super resolution on top of it. Um, in this example, we can actually see that we lose quite a few details in the hair. And um, the eyes also look a little bit weird. Um, that is also like the fact that uh, the, the input image itself, it's, um, it ha doesn't really have these details. But we can clearly see that um, this is still a lot better than having no video at all. So let's talk about a few limitations. Um, the, the pipeline that I showed here is really computational expensive in com comparison to HD64, which was, I mean, to be fair, optimized over years and years. So the pipeline that I showed here basically runs on a high-end consumer graphics card, a 4090 and NVIDIA card in real time. Um, but a solution would be to look into optimizations, um, use better hardware, and just optimize the whole pipeline. Um, another point, obviously, latency. Um, it's a big point. It doesn't really help if we can't run this in real time. So as I mentioned, this one runs in real time on a capable hardware. We can ha basically have 24 frames per second on a high-end graphics card. Uh, but again, if we look for solutions, we can look at the whole pipeline, we can optimize it and use, for example, different models for, for different emotions or like even um, different head movements. So we could imagine we use like one network to um, come up with realistic head movements, one network to um, look into the mouse movements and so on and so on. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention here is um, privacy safety. Since we take this single image at the beginning and use this to reconstruct the video, we can take any image, right? So basically, to imitate a person is really, really simple. Um, I can be Obama, I can be anyone you like to be. Um, the solution would be basically to train a model to identify this um, generated images. And at the end, um, this work that we have shown here wouldn't have been possible without the awesome people at Colabra, um, especially the machine learning team. Um, just a few words about Colabra itself. We are like an open source consultancy. Um, we have different departments, multimedia, kernel graphics, um, integration, XR, and obviously machine learning. So we work on the whole stack and our main emphasis is on open source. Um, just one thing that I wanted to mention here as well, the pipeline that I showed here is completely open source. So we released the weights for the model. We released the, the models itself, obviously, and um, some inference code to run what I've shown here. 
All right, um, that's for the talk. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask me or step by our booth in D66.